<laughs> Time now for our rants and raves. Starting with you, Kelly. You can just pick up where you left off. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. Speaking of uh, women that are uh, now this one, somebody needs to do a skit about her. So uh, <laughs> April Ryan, who is now in the news because at the press conference yesterday, oh, yeah. she asked a question of President Trump, and he responded to her by saying, do you know the Congressional Black Caucus? Would you set them up? As if, A, that's her job, which is not, and B, all black people know yeah, each other. Yeah. I barely know Dan. I, I don't. So I <laughs> just so people know. But anyway, it's a joke. All right. And she got into a heated exchange with Trump's number one sellout, Omarosa, who's not doing a very good job. Because if Omarosa was doing a good job, she would have told President Trump about the CBC, and she would not be having a heated exchange, a screaming match with April Ryan, who is one of the most professional, low key people that I know in that job. And this. I don't care. She couldn't have said anything to make Omarosa scream at her. So somebody needs to check Omarosa. What did Omarosa scream at her? After? This was just this past week. No, oh, just before? prior prior to this oh. about something that Anne recorded her. I think it and came out a, a couple of weeks. Ago. Oh. It happened a couple couple of weeks ago. And but she they recorded just, the exchange. Yeah. And in Washington D.C., you're not allowed to do that unless you ask permission. Exactly. Right. So she's Same recorded here. her illegally. She's talked some crap to her, which because we know it had to be if it's Omarosa. So my <laughs> thing is, if you're gonna be a sellout, be a good one. She's yeah. not doing her job well and I don't appreciate her talking about to April Ryan so I'm ranting about this. All right. Okay. Good one. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It yes. was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. All right Dan. I have a rant for Fortress Investment who none of us have ever heard no. of uh, but they are the majority owner of the gatehouse chain of newspapers which owns every newspaper in eastern Massachusetts practically except the Globe and the Herald. Uh, Fortress Investment has sold out to uh, SoftBank of Japan so now uh, the gatehouse newspapers essentially will no longer be sending their revenues out of state. They'll be sending them out of the country to Japan. Uh, it's a very odd situation made even odder by the fact that in December, uh, the head of SoftBank and then President-elect Trump appeared together and Trump took credit for some um, uh, announcement that SoftBank made that they were going to create 50,000 jobs and invest $50 billion in the United States, or $5 billion. Uh, so now, I guess, the Gatehouse Papers are somehow yeah. caught up in weird campaign promises that Donald Trump made. Yeah, well, oh. well, it's not a surprise. All right, Roy. Sure. Well, by the way, the New York Times has had a great story about how businessmen can get messed up by having their being identified with uh, supporting Trump. Uh, that was in today's paper. Um, I have a kind of an upbeat. Uh, oh, Believe it or not, about, a rave. About <laughs> that, uh, you didn't call it a rave. You said it's just upbeat. It's it's it is definitely a rave. Okay. It's a rave for uh, for the Pointer Institute and yeah. for the Knight Foundation. Not, not the Knight Foundation <laughs> made uh, uh, a donation to the Pointer Institute of for three years to finance the training of local journalists from from publications to come to Pointer and. I presume they'll be going out there to to teach them about uh, digital transformation, uh, watchdog reporting, public service, and it's very encouraging. Uh, Tim Franklin says that he's gonna, he's the he's the head of the Pointer Institute says that he thinks that's going to move them in a new direction mm, to doing good. good training on local level. Yeah, they do a good job already. Yeah. I know. All right, I was on the board for many years. Were you? Yes, right. Dan. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of that, um, I have a rave for three twenty-something journalists from Naples, Florida area, who have put together a newsletter called Local Matters, and what it does, what they do, is they scour the nation for watchdog journalism, those who are trying to un you know, uncovering corruption or unethical issues happening on the local level, oh. and they put it in this newsletter. The idea is that they want these great stories that are happening in local communities across the country to be elevated to a bigger audience, but also they hope that it will be inspiration for other journalists to are look at the kind of... Are they students? No, they're, no, they're working they're in the business. Okay. They're not students. They're upper 20s, yeah, but yeah. you know, they hope that this will inspire other journalists to see what's going on across the country and start digging any money. Community. So basically aggregating. Right, they're aggregating. And it's a newsletter, so there's some, yeah. it's my understanding now they're getting some grant money as well to help them with this. But it's, it's, you know, it's a noble thing to be able to highlight. We know there are a lot of yes. great stories that happen on the local level. And to the extent that you can, you know, move it across the country to a national audience is a good thing and inspire other journalists great. as well. Some of the best winners this year were local for the DuPont Columbia Awards. That's oh, great. That's, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. All right, well, 
I have a rave this week, and I have to admit, it's just a tad self-serving <laughs> because it's for me. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Last year at this time, well, no, first I'll start by saying this week, uh, Playboy magazine announced that they were going back to printing foldouts of nude women. And I would just like to say that one year ago this week, sure this is did. what I had to say. All right, I'm going to go way out on a limb here and say, I think this is a big mistake. <laughs> we're going to be uh, giving them a eulogy a year from now. <laughs> I also said flat out it wasn't going to work, but somebody stepped on me when I said that. But that was never going to work. So now no, no. Uh, Hugh Hefster's son has said, well, we're going to bring it back. And, and the problem was that the old way we did the nude photos was outdated. I mean, how <laughs> outdated is a nude photo? Oh, What's no. the difference going to be? Oh, different angle. I mean, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, is, it, it certainly puts true. for us the, the, the argument that we only read it for the articles. So yeah, that's right. That right. argument is done. All right? <laughs>